So the new circuit breaker COVID-19 is kicking today and I'm a fundamentally lazy person so it should come as no surprise that I have been figuring out ways I could make easy meals that still taste reasonably good. So the government has been giving out these protective face masks, uh, they are reusable ones and I think you get different versions and different colours depending on where you live and here we get this odd looking thing. The way it works is apparently you fold it and then you put it on. So the advice now is we have this on whenever we go out. It actually breathes really well. I'm not sure if that's a bit of a bad thing, but... So I'm off to Clementine Mall to get more groceries. I suspect that most of the panic buying should have subsided by now, so we'll see. Still a surprising amount of traffic on the roads, actually. So one of the few legitimate reasons we have left to go outside is exercise. And the government is keeping the public parks open for that purpose. But this is a little thing that I've been doing for a while now. That is I climb these, I climb the tallest flat that I can find nearby. And there are some very tall flats nearby. I think I'll take this off. Because after all, these stairwells are generally abandoned. I've never, never met anyone or climbed with these before. In fact, I suppose compared to the parks, this is actually better for social distancing because there's practically no one here. Very nice breeze at the top here. So I'm not actually done yet. I need to do one more time because 40 floors is really not much. So let's get to it. <laughs> okay, well, 
wow, I actually just met someone. I'm gonna have to take back that bit when I say that nobody is in this style. It's pretty a small amount of people do use them. So 80 floors is something like a little bit over 200 meters. So like a very small mountain. No mountains in Singapore, right? So that's pretty good. Ah, the breeze. Yeah. So that happened at a rather inconvenient time too because I can't exactly be going furniture shopping these times. So I went and stole a chair from the kitchen which will last me for the time being I suppose. I'm curious how the live stream is going to be like today because unlike previously, the new circuit breaker measures means that the pastor and the team cannot actually use the church building anymore because that's a workspace. They're probably going to have to do the live streaming from home, right? So I was like, okay, let's see how this is like. Turns out though that they pre-recorded the session, so... Well played, Pastor Ray. Guess we'll see what happens next week. <laughs> So, I'm gonna try something and if I'm successful, you will see the results tomorrow. Like it keeps on creating new chores and you never stop cleaning, you know? It's like you clean something and then the next thing gets dirty. Especially now that I'm preparing my own food a lot more. The kitchen man it gets dirty so quickly it's dirty again. Anyway, welcome to this week's vlog. Now I know that it looks like I missed out Monday there, but actually the plan was just to have some scenes from the week so that the vlog is not contained to the weekend but I didn't think that I would you know kind of go overboard and get footage on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday so I guess what I'm trying to say is that this is all experimental I don't know what I'm doing alright so I don't know what I'm gonna do next week we shall see
So I still do have food left at home, but I'm thinking we should, you know, try and support some of these stalls that are still running in the coffee shop because I'm sure the business is suffering. So tomorrow is Easter Sunday which commemorates the resurrection of Jesus Christ and so I think I can be forgiven for wanting to do a Christian theme ramble today so I'm gonna jump straight into that so what I want to kind of talk about is how uh, first of all how the COVID situation seems to be affecting many of us on a very visceral kind of level even though you know, compared to some of the natural disasters we've had in the recent past, like, you know, earthquakes and tsunamis. So far, COVID pales in comparison to these in terms of, you know, the sheer severity and danger. But perhaps the reason why so many of us common folk are affected is because COVID has come all the way to our own doorsteps. We are kind of face to face with it because it's here affecting each of us directly in our daily lives, even if only mildly for most of us. And the interesting thing is that this seems to be triggering a round of questioning among, among both Christians and atheists. Where is God in all of this? And of course, while the atheists tend to try to wrap this into a problem of evil style argument, that's not what I want to talk about today. And that doesn't mean it's a, not a serious argument, it is, right? But it's also an old and well-known one and there's a ton of literature already written and still being written on the problem. So if you're interested in that line of inquiry, then you're better served looking at the literature, right? So what I want to talk about today is more the Christian's perspective, meaning how, how, how do we make sense of this for people who are already Christian? And I think the first thing to note is that the COVID situation is not unique. There have been plenty of disasters and plagues and bouts of large-scale suffering and pain in the world before COVID. So as C.S. Lewis says, let's not exaggerate the novelty of our situation. These things have happened before and these things will happen in the hereafter. Any reasonably thought out position must come to terms with the fact that God allows these disasters and these suffering and pain to happen in the world. And also, more importantly, that such pain and suffering and disasters does not have a simple carrot and stick interpretation to them. So we can't say that um, this happened because of this and that sin, or this happened because of that and that uh, virtue. The historical data does not bear that up. And more importantly, the biblical data also does not bear that up. And I think this can be seen in many places in scriptures prominently in the book of Job, where we know from a narrative perspective that all of these terrible misfortunes that are happening to this pious man, Job, did not happen no matter what his friends say because he sinned or did some terrible thing. No, he's been an upright and pious man all along, yet all these misfortunes happened to him. And also, uh, in the incident of the collapse of the Tower of Siloam, where Jesus himself indicates that there is no particular fault or sin in those persons that were killed in the incident. So the biblical data also bears this out. Things happen and we have no clear way on our side of our stage to see, to see the rhyme and rhythm in them. And while of course as Christians, we do believe that God is capable of miracles and he can intervene in miraculous ways. And we also pray and we intercede for our loved ones and for our fellow human beings in our prayers. But at the same time, this is not the same as expecting a miracle just because of our faith or just because we pray. God cannot be manipulated by our faith and our prayer and stuff like that. And this should be quite obvious, really, right? Thou shalt not test the Lord your God. God will act according to His providence and He will respond to our prayers in the way that He sees fit. So where does this leave us as Christians? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is remember duty. Our duty stays the same whether it's during the times of disaster or during the times of peace. And that duty is to obey the Lord our God and to love our fellow human beings as ourselves. So 
plagues, great plagues have happened, you know, in the past before. Some of them have evolved prominent ancient Christians. And if you look at these Christians, they left their safety behind, went out to care for the sick, knowing that they will die because of it. And they didn't do this thinking that, oh hey, you know, I'm gonna demonstrate all this love and kindness and faith, and so God is going to miraculously protect me. No. They did it because they knew that this was what was demanded of them. And they knew that Christ went ahead of them and did it first. And so the same level of commitment and sacrifice may not be demanded of us today, but I think we need to remember the spirit of it. The spirit of Imitatio Christi, being like Christ. And we need to do the same today. See how we can look out for each other, how we can, you know, help even just a little bit to make everyone's life a little bit better in these difficult times. And second, this ties in with Easter Sunday tomorrow, to remember the resurrection of Christ. To remember that all that time ago, Christ faced the darkness and death and triumphed over them. So that we can know that there's light at the end of the world. That love and sacrificial kindness are tuned with the power behind the universe. And so that, you know, no matter the darkness and the hardships of the world, we can live and we can serve with hope. Whoever you are, wherever you are, and no matter what kind of difficulty and pain you may be facing at this time, I hope that you'll be blessed this Easter with hope in your heart, hope that can tide you through you know, the valley of the shadow of death, that can look forward to better days ahead. All right, so that wraps up the little lecture. And thank you for watching as always. So I have a little something prepared for the occasion to wrap up the vlog this week. So I'm gonna play that in a bit. Thank you again for watching. And as always, I will see you next week.